everyone. Thank you for watching my channel. My name is Michelle. I'm with Tumblers in the Making. And just so I am open and honest at this point, I am doing a live tutorial um, with my Facebook group. But that doesn't take away that you guys will be able to see what I do with this cup. Now with this particular tumbler, since I'm doing my first fabric cup, um, I saw this beautiful pattern at Walmart and it just gave me an antique, a uh, type of antique old newspaper feel. And at the end, or partially at the end, I actually torch the fabric and you will see that and it's something I haven't seen somebody else do and I thought it was a great opportunity to share it with you guys. Now I am no professional at all, absolutely not. I think uh, those that are more professionals have years of making tumblers and I am not one of those people. I only had, I've had about four months of doing tumblers and I've learned so much and I'm still learning. All the professionals are still learning something new as well. And that's just my honest opinion on, on how I feel about professionals. Um, but as for this cup, I measured what I need to measure. I am going to use Mod Podge on this so you guys get your Mod Podge prepared. I suggest that you guys take your Mod Podge and place it in a small container. This will help for the uh, Mod Podge not to dry from your bottle. So I prefer to keep it separate because you, you all know Mod Podge dries extremely fast. In cases like this, yeah, I'm kind of nervous that it dries way too fast for me. So I'm trying to hurry it up and get it on there as quickly as possible. Now this, this particular tumbler, I've already sanded it, uh, which is called prepping. For all those that don't know, you prep your cup and you spray, you prime it. You give it the spray paint, white spray paint on there. The one that I'm using now is the Rust-Oleum. 2x white spray all right so i'm going to use my tumbler holder to keep it in place which i'm not in love with my tumbler holder that i made so i may have to shrink it somehow i don't know it's just a little uncomfortable sometimes but as you can see just place your cup right on top of the half partial now i'm trying to stretch the fabric on here so it's really tight that's what i want i don't want no air in this tumbler from what i've seen and i've only seen two tumbler tutorials on fabric so this is my first time and the last time i saw the tutorials was like two months ago so i'm tightening it up i'm trying to see if i can keep it in place until the mod podge dries and then I'm going to finish it off. I always seem to like when I do Mod Podge, just, just do partial. Um, but when it comes to glitter, you want to do the whole entire tumbler at the same time because it, it thickens up on one side. And then if you try to Mod Podge the other side with glitter, it just, you might end up having more clumps on one side than the other. So I am brushing it to where I last Mod Podged. And I, I actually hit it a little bit on underneath that fabric and I'm just pushing it on there. All right guys, so I'm going to give you one opinion of mine and I like to share that. And that is the breathable fabrics. Um, if you are worried about getting air pockets under there, I don't think you should be worried at all. Um, once you lay it down, then the air should come straight out of your fabric. Um, unless there's a type of fabric that doesn't release air, then you should worry about. But I haven't had that issue about air pockets. Um, now if you lay the Mod Podge onto your fabric, and let it dry, then yeah, you will need to be concerned with that. And I don't suggest that either. So always lay the Mod Podge on your tumbler and then lay the fabric over it. 
Okay, so I am doing the little bits and pieces, which is the end of my seam. I'm adding a little over that seam and under it. And then I wanna tighten it up really, really good because the seam is absolutely crucial at this point because it can lift at any moment. So I wanna make sure that seam is nice and tight. This is looking so cute. And I'm trying to get it nice and straight, making sure that the ends are modged podged correctly. This is just so cute. All right, so I went ahead and waited for it to dry for about 10 minutes and I started cutting all the way to the top. The beginning of my cup and the ending of my cup. I had way too much fabric on here, but that's okay because it looked great at the end. I can't wait to show you guys the torch part. That was just awesome. All right, so I forgot to go ahead and much podge that little section there. I didn't even realize it. Now I gotta wait for this to dry. And then I noticed at the top, there was some little, little areas that was not Mod Podge correctly or didn't adhere very well. So I went ahead and made sure that it was adhered. All right, right here, I accidentally kind of cut a little too high, but it's okay because I torched it at the end. So it kind of did good instead of bad. So I'm not trying to go too high on cutting the ending of this. I'm giving it a little slack. All right, so we're gonna use our X-Acto knife and we're gonna cut straight down onto this, this fabric. But first I need to measure, or not measure, like lay out my painter's tape and make sure that I make a straight cut so I'm usually pretty good at eyeing things and I know when something's straight and when it's not. This is not this is not always the case, but for me I can pretty much see it. And you guys, if you guys have a great eye, go for it. Just put a painter's tape on there so you can see your line and you know where to cut. Now, when I place the painter's tape it wasn't exactly on the beginning of my seam. I placed it a little over that beginning seam. And you'll see why. You wanna do a deep, deep cut because you wanna also make sure that you cut through the second fabric as well underneath it. And it seems like you're gonna destroy your cup, you're not. So just cut straight through both fabrics. So I have a new X-Acto knife and I'm gonna use it. Walmart had them for $2. And I believe it was for the back to school supplies. And I just jumped at the chance to buying them because a lot of crafters need the X-Acto knife constantly. All right, so let's wing it and go straight on through the two fabrics, the one that's overlapping and the one that's underneath. And I made a perfect straight line. So I can remove my painter's tape. That looks so good, it's so straight. Look how straight that looks, that looks awesome. Now I gotta pull the one underneath it. So I hope the cut went straight through, and it did. So I'm very pleased with that. And then I just tightened it up. That's it. Look how straight that is. So make sure that when you do overlap, when you make your straight cut through both fabrics, you don't do it to where the beginning of your seam is at. Always do it in a little after your, the beginning of the seam, if that makes sense.
All right, so now that I have that in place, I got a Mod Podge where I pulled it and over the beginning of that seam and then over it. I like I want to make sure it's on there really good. I don't want to go through it anymore. You guys, if you you see any of those extra seams, just cut it. Don't pull on it. I learned that the hard way. It just it made it kind of pulled the other fabrics together while it's drying, so don't do that. So I have to cut it, uh, you know, as tight as I can, or use your X-Acto knife and cut it. All right, so once I cut all the little stragglers, I went ahead and Mod Podged over the seams. I want to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be on there, and when I epoxy it, it's it won't move it. And that's kind of like a water slide type deal where you feel like it's going to come up. So I want to Mod Podge the whole thing and really make sure it's on there good. I heard regardless, you still need to Mod Podge the outside. And just so that your epoxy adheres to this fabric. Because if you leave it as is, it won't adhere. I don't know if that's true. I don't want to jump at the chance of trying out that theory. But I'm going to Mod Podge over it. And then I'm going to go ahead and let it dry. And then we're going to torch it. But I kind of wish I did something a little different to test that out. And it's to torch it while, before the Mod Podge that I placed over it. Um, there was something that I've noticed as I was torching it after the Mod Podge dried. And there was, it kind of bubbled. Um, it's hard to explain. It's like if you place plastic on top of something hot, it just bubbles up. That's exactly what it did to this. It bubbled up, but luckily for me, it just went away. Like, I was scared for a moment. I thought I was gonna have to start all over. Um, it went away and it was fine. After it cooled down, it just flattened right back out. Great, but I think next time I do one of these tumblers, it's going to be torching it before the Mod Podge that I just, I'm placing on right now. Now, I'm Mod Podging everything as quickly as possible. I wanna make sure I get a good coat. I think I did two coats on this. Like I wanna make sure that the epoxy adheres to this fabric and I don't have any dimples or fish eyes. And also bubbles, because fabric, it's breathable, might release bubbles. So <laughs> I wanna make sure there's no bubbles coming out uh, later on. I wanna release all the bubbles as much as I can. So Mod Podge actually works on a lot of different levels on this. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and let it dry for a good 15 minutes. All right, so my cup is nice and dry. I waited for about 15 minutes. It feels rough to the touch. It doesn't feel like fabric too much. And that's the way I want it. That's how. That's what I'm going for. Now, excuse the mess, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use my X-Acto knife and start cutting the rim since it's rock solid at this point. And it was a little tricky don't get me wrong, um, I didn't think I was kind of at the right angle for this because I was trying to allow you guys to see how to use your X-Acto knife to cut the rim. And it, in some areas it worked great, some areas not because it was still soft fabric. But because of this is the reason why I decided to torch um, the fabric because all the little loose pieces of uh, fabric kind of sticking out I said you know what let me try torching it and see if that little the little pieces will go away and it did and it did more than that I, I saw the vision at that moment I said you know what okay oh I can turn this into an old newspaper feel um, the burning of the fabric gave it that depth that it needed and 
I won't go back on it. I won't. It's just beautiful. All right, and here's the moment, the torch. So this is where I'm getting kind of the idea. I'm just trying to burn only, only the fabric pieces that are sticking straight out. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do at this point. And then I noticed that it just gave it this color, this beautiful color to it. And I was like, hmm, I think I'm gonna go with it. And then I'm looking at it and I'm observing it. And this is what creativity comes from. Your mistakes can be that $40 or $60 cup. And it works, like it really, really works. Look at that. That looks so pretty. I could have left it just right there. I could have, I could have but I didn't. I wanted to continue it. All right, um, I'm going to continue to do this part of the video a little slow, um, normal speed, so you guys can see exactly how I did this. I'm touching it, I'm making sure if it's gonna flake off, and it didn't. And I'm blowing it as well, so it doesn't burn up the fabric. Meaning that it doesn't, tr the, the burn doesn't travel up towards the center of my cup. So I'm blowing it. It was a scary moment. Making sure I burn every little thing that's sticking straight out. Okay, so this is where I started seeing that the pattern, like I was like, oh, I like this pattern. This is looking really, really nice. I'm liking this mistake. And then I started kind of bringing it down. I saw the newspaper in my, in my, in my vision, you know, from back in the days, maybe 1900s where a building would burn and then the papers kind of fly down and it's a newspaper an old newspaper just burned up that's what I that's what I saw and so I'm going around this fabric burning it like who enjoys burning their own fabric I sure did I I, I have to admit it was fun I didn't really want to touch too much of my teacup, my center point. But it didn't it didn't harm it. It didn't it didn't turn that picture into something else. So it didn't melt it or anything. So I was I was happy with that. I said, "Okay, let me just keep going then." Oh my gosh. Cute. I kind of now that I think about it, I wish I kind of dabbed um, a little bit of, I don't know, um, how can I explain it? Add a little bit of ink or maybe dab into a darker brown from your acrylic paint and kind of mimic a, a whole burn in the middle of your sections. <clears throat> That's what I'm thinking. Now, I personally don't think you should burn your, your seams at all. I, I think you should kind of stay away from that because that is your seams. Again, I was terrified this thing was gonna be lifted when, once I added the epoxy to it. But 
but I wanted that look and now that I look at it like I want to add the holes of you know because it's just not the endings it's like the middle of the paper also it burns and if I could have added just a little bit of paint and spread it out like a burn that would have been great and make it look distressed All right, so I'm gonna go a little faster on this so you kind of have the, the idea of what I was trying to do. All right, so I reviewed the top and the bottom of this tumbler, looking around, seeing if there's any loose, um, loose fabric kind of sticking out. And I did see that the, I noticed that the rim of my cup had a little bit that was coming out of the rim a little too much. So I wanted it as close as possible to the rim. So as I was cutting it with the X-Acto knife, the burn look was going away and I can see the fabric just fine. I was like, oh no, no, you're not, you're not going to show through. I got to burn you until you look nice and brown again. Now that I'm content with how the cup turned out, I am going to go ahead and add Mod Podge at the seams or at the rim of the cup. And the reason why is because I want to make sure that when the um, epoxy gets on this cup or touches this cup, it doesn't kind of, like I said before, I'm worried that it's going to lift. Um, I do trust the Mod Podge under epoxy, but I don't trust it enough when it comes to fabric. So this will be something if you guys feel comfortable with Mod Podging just after you burned it, that's fine. I prefer to Mod Podge it because I also, you need to think about the particles of what you burned might end up smearing on your cup and then it'll look like little, like bubbles. It'll come up from the epoxy. So I prefer to Mod Podge it. Very content with this cup at this moment, for sure. Now I did add the Mod Podge on or over the fabric and it's slightly kind of wet at this point and I'm just dabbing my finger with whatever glitter I have and kind of rub it so whatever is still wet I'm, I was hoping that the glitter will stick to that you know little bits and pieces of wet Mod Podge um, the teacup ended up getting a heavier hit of glitter because that was my focal point and I love glitter and anything that sparkles is it's beautiful to me I would actually go back if I could and not do that it takes away the old newspaper feel and I would prefer to go ahead and use a very fine tip brush and brush over the teacup, my main focal point, whichever your focal point is, and then add the glitter. But I'll wait until the Mod Podge is fully, fully cured, fully dry, and then go ahead and do the main focal point, grab a very fine tip brush, and just brush or draw <laughs> technically like drawing your teacup and then add that glitter so that way your Mod Podge is already dry it's not gonna fall all over your cup it's just gonna be on your main focal point that's it guys that's all it takes it's super simple super easy it doesn't take long at all the only thing I would change is maybe not spreading that glitter all over the place um, but it turned out fantastic look I'm just gonna do an up-close shot so you can see the glitter look at that that is super cute who doesn't love glitter all right guys here's the reveal here's that fabric tumbler I did I added a piece of vinyl in the middle of where it's separated to give it um, that nice little feel. So it looks one cohesive area. It came out great and I torched it. So I burned the top to make it look like an old newspaper and the bottom I put a gold rim, a slight gold rim and then I kind of gave it a raggedy look 
to make it give that old time feel came out great I don't know if you guys can see that so I burned it and then I added glitter around the teacup I don't know if you guys can see that Well, I am very pleased at how this beautiful tumbler came out, my very first fabric tumbler. Not perfect, of course, but I'm pretty sure that the next fabric tumbler I make will end up being absolutely perfect. Besides that, I hope you guys learned some things and some tips and tricks. And if you need to know what supplies I've used or my link to my Facebook group, it will be down on the description below. Thank you for watching.